Hello, my loves. Welcome or welcome back to Chemistry with Kismet Tarot. I am Monica, the Kismet Chemist. If you are new to my channel, welcome. Welcome to the family. I am honored to have you. If you are returning, welcome back. I have missed you. All right, my loves. So we are getting messages today from our Mayan ancestors. The ancestral energy has been so, so strong lately. And I... I felt so inspired after I worked with the Andromedan ancestors. I have always been drawn to the Mayan culture, to the Aztec culture, to the Egyptian culture, to the Greeks, to the Romans, to all the ancient civilizations. And as I really opened up to the Mayan way and the Tzolkin, I can't say it right, but... Um, to their their day calendar and their lunar calendar and their symbols and their messages and the energies and just the way in which their people were i found an almost i'd almost call it a feeling of home it's like a part of my soul awoke when i connected with them now a lot of people when they think about Mayans, they think about Quetzalcoatl and the, the feathered serpent. They think about bloodletting, blood sacrifice, human sacrifice. But that is just one facet of the culture. And there is so much more to that. And that was a very small part of the culture. Yes, these, these ancient civilizations went to war, but so did all other ones. What I learned from really studying the Mayans is, first of all, they have connections to star seeds. They have connections to Atlantis, to Lemuria. In fact, as I tapped into the Mayans, I actually heard the first Lemurians. So that to me, the energy that I picked up was really that they are the, like the first level descended from the original Lemurians. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. I'm still getting over my cold. But they also were linked to the Egyptians. Both built pyramids. Both understood the nature of, of architecture, astrology, mathematics. They were very, very advanced. They also were very reliant on divination. They lived in the Yucatan Peninsula in South America. And in that place, it was rainy half the year and dry the rest of the year. And I watched a documentary on, on some of the peoples where they had found a civilization that just was abandoned, this location that was abandoned, and it was thriving so beautifully. But one of the things that caught me was, these are people that we, we in this modern world, with all our modern technological advances, would, be, would consider so primitive. And at the same time, they knew how to build quarries. They knew how to dig into the earth and create places to catch rainwater so that they would have water throughout the year, even in the dry months. And I was sitting with spirit while watching this and I was so amazed. I, it was like a little kid all over again, like learning about all the magical, mystical things. And spirit challenged me. I heard this question come into my head. Would this be able to be done today? And I honestly, I said, I don't know. I don't know. I, I would like to think that we all have these kind of survival methods, these survival instincts within us that it's still there but I don't know. And it amazes me that this is considered such a primitive civilization. And yet at the same time, they're so technologically advanced for their time. They are so intellectually advanced. They are so spiritually advanced that there is so much that we can learn from them. Now, one of the things that I noticed about these people is they were far more peaceful than they ward. They preferred to build empires, but as they built their empires and you could see it through the hierarchy, the, the ruling elite would have their houses up on top of the hill, but they were not like it is in modern day. 
those in the in the ruling elite genuinely did everything that they could in order to build their kingdom and in order to build their kingdom they know that they have to help the ones below them to also build and that is so important it their their culture reflects a basic spiritual principle in my own life we all rise or we all fall so we must fight to make sure that we all rise if you resonate with the mayans with the egyptians with the lemurians with the atlanteans with these ancient civilizations that modern day would consider very primitive and yet in your heart and soul or rather in my heart and soul i can tell you definitively they feel so much more advanced and so much wiser and we could learn so much if you resonate with them the way that i do this reading is definitely for you so if you see here we have four piles but i also have the collective energy and this is what i want to go over next and i know this is going to be a kind of long intro but i knew it was going to need to be with us covering the mayans and it being a culture that not a lot of people know about so the what the way that these mayan cards work is each one is each of the orange and red ones the orange yellow reds are correlated with a solar sign and each of these rainbow and blue cards are correlated with a number it's a vibrational number so we're gonna i'm not going to go over the finer details of it because each one has its own significations and i will go over them in the piles but i also I really, and again, this is another one of those areas that I really needed to sit with. I needed to really sit with the runes and whether it was right to pull them. But the whole premise that started these runes is helping us understand that we can blend these cultures together in order to make ourselves more unified, to understand that spiritually speaking, we are all unified. And the Norse gods are definitely here to help us do that. And the Mayan ancestors felt very anxious and ready to start unifying. So we are going to work with both. And it is it it amazes me as I was working with these energies. It amazes me how well these messages flow together with the crystals and the runes as well as the cards. It's amazing. So we have collectively the rune Rado. And it stands for the wagon or the journey. And then we have Tichuan, and this is the monkey, as well as Hun. And Hun is source energy, it's creation energy. The message here that we're looking at is understanding, first of all, that we are all connected. Just as the Mayans are showing us that we're all connected, that they were connected to the Egyptians, the Lemurians, the Atlanteans, so too are we all connected. So too are the runes and these symbols connected. We are all connected in one. And we are all as a collective, because we are all connected in one, now we are all as a collective being called to start a new journey. Now these energies right here is actually the energies of today. So you will be seeing this on November 10th of 2022. And I did this very specifically. You can come to this reading afterwards. But the energies that we're tapping into for where this new start begins collectively for us is this energy right here. And whenever you come to this reading in these piles, that's when your new start begins. So this is talking about monkey. It actually is correlated to Venus, but it's also correlated to the vascular system, to the blood system, to the arteries and the veins. And this again goes along with this collective theme that I've been picking up about the bloodstream as well as the meridian system. And the meridian system is the energetic system that runs parallel to the bloodstream. I've had this coming through several times in several readings now. And 
De Chuan talks uh, all about <clears throat> getting creative and getting inventive, but having fun. It's it's kind of like Loki energy with a little less um, chaos. It talks about really just diving into the enjoyment of life, diving into love, diving into connection, diving into spirit, and letting yourself create and have fun. And then we have Hoon, and Hoon is source energy. It is creation. It is a connection to all things. And this is talking all about how we we have this tendency to take life too seriously. We're on this journey of life and we can take it so seriously. And I myself have been victim of that. I have I take my spiritual responsibility very seriously. However, it doesn't mean that we're meant to not have fun. It doesn't mean that we're not meant to enjoy ourselves and to really roll with the way that life goes. This is talking to us about being open, being receptive, really getting to the heart and the core of having fun, being flexible, and knowing that you can you can be honest with yourself when you come back to the source and the origin of why you're doing anything. This is something that I struggled with with my tarot channel. And I, I, I've talked about this on and off, but I haven't really talked about it with you guys. So I'm going to give you guys just a little bit of a backstory and then we'll get into the piles. <laughs> so when I started this YouTube channel, I started it back in September of 2021, but I was so scared to step into my divinatory gifts. I was so scared to allow myself to create in this way because it was so unnatural to the way that I was raised. So I tried to go a different path. And that path really led me on this journey of discovering more about myself, discovering more about the ways in which I perceive myself in the world and the world in relation to me. It was a very deep, very profound learning journey that I went on. And I am deeply grateful for said learning journey. However, when it was all said and done, I came right back to this channel and then I started making videos and something inside of me was like, this is going to be so simple. It's, it's going to be so overnight. And then it wasn't. And then I started seeing numbers climb and drop and climb and drop and climb and drop. And then I would see them consistently drop. And then it just, it almost felt like everything was going the exact opposite way I wanted it to. And the realization that I came to was that it had nothing to do with anyone outside of myself. It had nothing to do with me being on the wrong path. It 100% had to do with my faith in myself and my path. In whether I was enjoying myself, whether I was living passionately, living energetically aligned. Energetic alignment is living passionately, living in the experience and having fun and enjoying yourself. And I wasn't, I wasn't doing that because I had made it about the numbers and I had made it about the subscribers and the money and the, the time. And I didn't make it about the messages. And then I shifted gears and I said, you know what? This is what I love. No matter how many times I move away from tarot, I always come back. It's in my blood. It's in my bones. It's in my soul. This is such a huge part of who I am that no matter how much I would try, I could not excise it from me from the second I touched a tarot deck. The second I shoveled those cards and opened myself up to the energies, it was like a whole new part of Monica opened up. This is what we're asked to start anew in our lives. It doesn't mean that we start a new creative project. It means that we start loving the creation that we are, loving the creations that we bring forth into the world, loving this way of moving in a kind of divine order that makes no sense because it goes in a spiral and it's like a wheel. It's, it's knowing that life is nonsensical and so we can be nonsensical right along with it. It's knowing that Spirit just wants us to have fun sometimes. Sometimes just wants us to have fun. And this, to me, this is so exhilarating. It is so fun. 
And at the same time, it is so meaningful. It's so deeply resonant with me alone. To find other people that it's resonant with fills my heart, it fills my soul, it fills my life. Just as much as the people that I love fill my heart and my soul and my life, so too do you in this community, so too does this channel. And that's something that's so big. So today, we are asked to start a new journey. We have the card 11 and 1. It is literally 1, 1, 1. I am filming this on 11, 1. It is time to start something new. And it doesn't mean giving up on the old. It means it's time to bring new, fresh energy into it. Unless you are ready to scrap it. And I tell you guys what, I've been scrapping so much stuff in my life, but not my creations. I have been scrapping needless things in my home. I have been scrapping these old mindsets, these old ways of operating, these old energies. I've been scrapping them all in favor of joy, in favor of happiness, in favor of fulfillment, in favor of prosperity and abundance and wealth and happiness. That's what I'm scrapping everything for. And I am proud to say all of those things because I am worthy of them. And so are you. The Mayans are here to tell you why you're worthy of these things. They're here to help you become inspired again, to remember a core part of your soul, of your heart, so that you can have fun on this journey again, because they did too. No matter how much hard work they put in, they understood that the more that they put of themselves into something, the more sacred that something was. They honored their connection to the ancestors and to humanity so deeply that they would do secondary ancestral burials. It was not sacrifice. They would take their ancestral bones and they would purify them and then they would bury them underneath the foundation of their homes for blessings and protection. They were so in touch with being human and being spiritual that they want us to learn from them. And that's what I am here to help share with you all. So although I know this has been a very long <laughs> intro, and I hope you guys watched it, without further ado, we're going to move into the piles and allow you to get in touch with the energies and to choose. Now, I did want to rem remind you all, and I'm going to move this power symbol back up because it always seems to get bumped off. My cat likes to play up here when I'm not filming. There will be the open channel for Reiki flowing through this entire reading if you are inclined to accept that energy. You do not have to, and it is not going to hit you if you do not accept it, but it is here for your healing, as all the messages in No Shade November are. We have four piles, four cards, well, technically eight cards, but four sets of cards, and four stones. If you are called to a stone and a set of cards that are not together, that means you have more than one pile. If you are called to multiple piles, please listen to the messages. These are, these are definitely messages that are designed to help give you as much information as you feel called to. And I do realize that there is a um, audiovisual delay here. I'm having some processing issues, but we're going to roll with it. So on pile one, we have Eb and Khan, and we have the rune Nothies or Need. On pile two, we have Ben and Ook, and we have Thurisaz or Thorn or Giant. On pile three, we have Eeks and Uak. And the Uru's rune or Orox. And then on pile four, we have Etznab and Lahun, as well as Sowilo or the Sun rune. Now, I'm going to go ahead and mute my microphone. I'm going to give you guys a couple of minutes to spend some time with the cards and the energies, and I will see you at your piles.
Hello, pile one. If you chose the first pile with the ebb as well as con and the Nothies, <laughs> sorry, I had to double check how to pronounce it. The Nothies rune, this is the message from your Mayan ancestors. So I wanted to start with your overall energy and that would be this core energy. And then we're gonna look at the past, the present, and the future. This is your higher self and this is your inner self right now or your lower self. It's like as above, so below, and this is just the core of your being. So now that we've gone over all the cards, and again, I'm having some delays in, in the technicality, so I do apologize, guys. Um, if some of the audio and visual are a little bit off kilter, I just wanna put that out there right away. So with the ebb card, it actually correlates to the word B. It's like a reversal. And we can, we can find ourselves in this energy. And this is the energy of the road, the white road, the, the journey that we're on in this life. We can find ourselves on this journey. And it almost seems like we're on a journey backwards. So when we're moving backwards on this journey, we're actually looking at the things and the pieces and the places and the people and the experiences that came before. And when we do this, it's because we're starting to reevaluate how we define need, how we define want, how we define desire, how we define need. And with these two together, con actually is the the vibrant or the vibration or the frequency the sound emitting quality of structure you're looking for what it is that you need to help structure your path moving forward and in in this way it's almost like the most simplistic message ever except that the ebb card really correlates deeply with the earth energy and that earth star chakra that's below your feet, six feet below ground, think of it that way. It's that anchoring to this realm, that anchoring to your purpose and your path here. I always correlate the earth star chakra with um, Saturn. And if you look at Saturn's placement within your natal chart, the house, the sign, and the aspects, you'll see what you have anchored here to do. Saturn isn't always about the karma that we carry, but rather about what effect we're meant to have on certain causes in the world. And this is something that came so profound to me when I realized like, oh, if, if Saturn is correlated to the Earth Star Chakra, then all the lessons he's trying to teach us are literally this structure. He's literally trying to teach us how to learn self-reliance, how to learn self-discipline, but not in a way that separates us from the whole, in a way that actually helps us connect more with ourselves and our path here in the world. It's about knowing when to move, knowing when to act, and knowing when to hold back. It's knowing what, what causes we genuinely are passionate about and what it is that those causes need from us. Sometimes we, we have to look back at our past to see what we have learned and what we have grown into in order to be able to actually step forth into the path that we're meant to step forth into. I was actually just, um, I was emailing a friend of mine talking about medical intuitives. And this really resonates deeply with that concept is that it's, it's the same concept as um, psychological professionals. The best psychologists, psychiatrists, the best medical intuitives, in my opinion, in my experience, are those who have dealt with certain things. Like a psychologist who has gone through a spiritual awakening is more adept at speaking about spiritual awakenings. If they have gone through childhood trauma, they are more adept at speaking on childhood trauma. I trust those who have experienced and survived and then turned and thrived outside of it 
for their for their opinions, for their beliefs, for their insights, for their suggestions, for their methods. I trust them far more than someone who literally just went and went to school and got a degree. That's a personal preference of mine because for me, my life is based off of experience. What I what I come here and teach you guys has everything to do with my own personal experiences. It does not have to do with me having a degree or letters behind my name. It has to do with the fact that I have lived these things and experienced these things. And therefore, I bring them forth into the world to help others like myself. Now, you, the Mayan ancestors want you to think about the fact that they were a people that would see what was needed and take action, take structured action. They changed the face of, of agriculture, of astronomy, astrology, divination, of um, architecture, and especially architecture. They always knew what was needed. If they needed a bigger place, then they would build upon what they needed. They built structures that shouldn't, it just, they defied odds. They knew that they needed water, so they built aqueducts. They literally created what they needed. They created all the structures that they needed. But when those structures, which were sound because they still exist now, when those structures were not adequate for the amount of people that were there, for instance, there was one kingdom in particular who just literally seemingly vanished, still planned to come back, but left. And it was because of long durations of drought in the area. And the water that they were able to store was just simply not enough for the amount of people. And so they recognized that they needed water. (laughs) So they left. They left all of their everything. And it's without hesitation because this is what they need. This is what their people need. And so they moved on. They moved to a new place and that's that was that and it's literally this this road that you take this road that you take where you realize this is something that i need to do this is something that i need to walk away from or walk towards and this is talking about sometimes you have to look back to see who you were in order to see who you have become in order to see what structures you feel like need you not it's not always about what you need sometimes it's what needs you and and that's the energy that i pick up from you guys and as it stands right now that's a beautiful like spiritual confirmation because if you guys can hear willow whining she needs me to let her out so i will be right back momentarily okay my loves i am back so we're going to get into the cards here and i wanted to start with um the higher and lower self first, and then we're going to look at the past, the present, and then we're going to look at the center of your being here. So when we're looking at the higher self or the, this is as above, so below energy. First, we're going to start with this hermit. You're, you're, you're being called into this retreat and recharge energy. You may have been in this retreat and recharge energy. And you know, the funny thing is, is as above and so below really do reflect each other because you've got the smoky mirror up here and it's Buddha and he's sitting in his Buddha style and you've got hermit here sitting in that exact same Buddha style. This is about meditation, but the smoky mirror talks about the illusions and delusions and and the the ways in which the mind or the world can appear one way when it really is something different. Now, there are times where we're called into our inner cave We're called into that shadow work. And that's something that I get from you guys is that you've been in a shadow work phase for quite some time. I just heard three years, Um, three, four years, maybe quite significant, um, especially with 12 becoming three and then four that just like really, really slammed into me. Um, Three years, especially three years. Um, Some of you may have had um, inklings that started about four years ago, but really got into it about three years ago. That doesn't have to resonate for this to be your pile, but that's an energy I'm picking up. Now, the smoking mirror is a card 47. It reduces to an 11. You're in this phase where you're actually perfecting shadow work in your life. You're perfecting your shadow. 
You're seeing beyond all the smoke and mirrors in the world. But the smoke and mirror also talks about seeing where you're needed. It, it, it talks about this idea right here of seeing where you're needed. And in order to see where you're needed, you have to see where you need yourself internally. You have to understand what it is that you need from yourself. Because what we give to the world, we are all meant to give to ourselves first and foremost. That's the, the, the whole premise of an equality of give and take means that we have to give to ourselves before we can give to others. So for instance, this morning, instead of filming right away, this morning I did laundry. I made my bed like I always do because it's just like my morning routine. I make my bed and clean up and then I start a load of laundry. And then I drop my husband off at work and then I drop my kids off and then I go and pick up my husband and he drops me off and then it's my day. So what I did while I was prepping for this is I did laundry. I folded clothes, I put them away, I started new laundry, I double checked my stepson's room to make sure that he didn't have any dirty clothes. And I went through my house and just kind of tidied up. I put the dishes away from last night and then I made myself a cup of tea and listened to a pick a card reading. And then I came in here, filmed the intro, walked away. These are, but all of these things that I'm mentioning, oh, and then I went and <laughs> finished the apple butter from yesterday and started an apple pumpkin prosperity butter. I'm really excited for that one. But these are all things that it, it may seem like I'm giving to other people because, you know, I mentioned my stepson and I'm cleaning the house and I'm watching a pick a card and all of these things. But what I'm doing is I'm giving to myself. I'm giving myself the freedom of my own morning to do what I want to do, to do what feels right to me. I organized my closet this morning, my my um, linen closet upstairs, and I felt so phenomenal, just, just phenomenal. I organized and threw away a bunch of old, like beat up furniture stuff that we've had sitting in our basement, just kind of waiting to, I don't know, decide what we were going to do with it. And I finally was like, no, I just want it out of the house. I don't need it anymore. It's not being used. It's not the greatest. Like, we just don't need it. It's just sitting there taking up space in my laundry room. And so last night I hauled it out and my husband and I took it to the dump. It's doing these things that changes the energy in, in my own energy field. I'm giving to myself. Now I feel ready and prepared to come here and give to you. And that's how it changes. We change it when we start giving to ourselves. When we know what it is that we want and what we need, what we truly need of ourselves, then we are able to see the reflection in the world of what the world needs of us. And that's a state that you're in currently. So let's see how you got into that state. We have, ooh, the card 25 in the Holy Mountain, which reduces to a seven. And then winter, take care of your needs. Oh my God. Oh, I love that. Okay. So this, the number seven is a deeply spiritual number. Um, I am a life path seven and it is my second favorite number. Ironically, 12 is my first. I don't know why. I mean, the hanged man is my favorite card, but still. But this is literally saying like the, the Holy Mo Mountain talks about going on a personal pilgrimage. It talks about going on this retreat, this, this pullback energy of it's time for you to go internal. It's time for you to seek out spirit. It's time for you to find your truth. Um, the, uh, the solar eclipses of this year, um, the first one would have been in April. And then the second one we just had, by the time you watch this on the 10th, we'll actually be past the the lunar eclipse. But the solar eclipse is what I'm seeing with this Holy Mountain card. The solar eclipse in Scorpio, especially, um, which was October 25th, may have really, really highlighted your, your pull to it's no longer winter. It, it's time to come out of my winter season. It's time to it's kind of reflective of my own energy. Like my husband made a comment that didn't even sink in and it could just be because I'm tapped into your energy so deeply, but 
He's like, babe, it's like you're doing spring cleaning. And I said, yeah, that's exactly what it feels like, but it's not spring. I mean, feels kind of springish because it's 70 degrees outside in November and that never happens in North Dakota. But, but it was this, this, I've been on this journey internal and I've been doing this for several years. And every time I try to go external with it, I have more to learn internally, but I feel like I'm finally finding the balance of where I'm needed in the world, both for myself, but also for the collective. This is something that you're coming into. This is something that you're, you may be being called right now in this moment to really think about how you want to move out of your winter phase. And yes, it can be very discombobulating, especially if you, <laughs> if you're like me and you live in the Northern hemisphere, but I'm looking at winter this year. And for the first time ever, I am so excited for snow. I'm so, I'm so excited for winter because it, it doesn't feel like winter to me. To me, winter this year feels like spring or feels like summer. It's a very strange, very unusual feeling. You're not used to it. But when you're called here, when you're called to take this sojourn to spirit, to find your way back to spirit, which is one of the most beautiful journeys you could ever go on, you have to be able to see all of the illusions and the delusions that you create for yourself. And when I say delusions, I don't mean that you're delusional. I mean that you delude yourself into thinking that you're not enough. You, you, it's almost like, please don't take offense to this. I want you guys to understand what I'm saying because I do crazy making shit to myself all the time, <laughs> like all the time. So in this way, I want you guys to think like, how much are you crazy making yourself? How much are you being like, oh, I can't do this. Oh, I'm not good enough. Oh, what if this? Oh, what if that? Because I was that person. I was that person. I'm not like, no joke, guys, go watch my imposter syndrome video. I literally struggled so much with imposter syndrome. Like who the hell am I to do these things? You know who the hell I am? I am somebody that spirit chose to, to come here and do this. I am someone who volunteered to do the things that I do. I'm, I am a strong, powerful, ancient soul. And you know what? I'm saying this because so are you. And now Isla Nario's song, um, turning wake is in my head. Um, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to make a note of that real quick. Give me just a minute. Turning wake. If you haven't heard it before, I know it's come through in, in some of my other videos, but that song, I have the feeling if you listen to it, it's going to like blast something open in your awareness. I remember the first time I listened to that song and it was like insane. I was like, this is exactly right. This is me. But I digress. You guys have been on, like literally you've been, you've been on this journey, this journey to spirit and spirit has been all about teaching you what you need. What, and, and it can be literally anything. It's not always about, it, it's not always about like, okay, I need a house. I need a car, all of these. Sometimes it's literally like, I need to wake up in the morning and brush my hair. I need to wake up in the morning and put pants on. I need to wake up in the morning and feel like the world is not going to stop. Like I'm not going to stop. Like I can keep breathing. Sometimes, sometimes that's literally where you're at and that's what you need. And then you get there. And I feel like you guys have been there and are coming out of it. And there's a little bit of trepidation that I feel in your energy field of like, is this really going to happen? Can I really come out of this? Is yes. Yes, you can. That's that delusion thing. That's that crazy making thought. You have to be able to recognize, hey, I'm doing this. Now I want to change it. Now I want to shift it. And that is literally what you're doing. Okay. So let's see where you're being called to. All right, we have 34 many paths. And look, seven again. You guys are, are shifting so greatly. Oh my gosh. And then we have medicine guardian. Be open to healing information. Look at the, oh, your heart chakra is opening. Massive, massive opening of the heart chakra. Um, You guys, maybe mercury dominant. That would make you a Gemini or um, Virgo rising. You don't have to have that placement for this to resonate. However, I am 
because of the caduceus, I am seeing Mercury in here. However, you may resonate with Archangel Raphael, Archangel Metatron, um, <clears throat> Archangel Gabriel or Gabriel, depending on how you, I always has a feminine energy for me. But if you look here, there the difference between the Hermit card and this Medicine Guardian is is literally like, you know, the face gets shaved down and, and the hair gets untangled and, and trimmed up. This is what I'm seeing here. It's it's you're cleaning up. You're do, you're doing this like internal cleansing, internal cleaning up. And now I get why I was getting that um, medical intuitive. You may be turning into you may be called to the healing profession in any way, shape or form. This. Oh, you guys. I bet you guys are my Reiki pile. So this many paths, I want you guys to know that there are so many different types of Reiki. If you're called to doing Reiki, there are so many different types. And when I say so many different types, I am attuned to um, traditional Karuna Key, uh, Grandmaster level 20, Kundalini, Advanced Kundalini, Ethereal Crystals, uh, celestial, like I'm, I'm telling you guys, there are so many different forms. It doesn't matter which one you take because all of them are the same to me. They're all the same to me. They're all spirit. And the many past card literally says there are many paths to spirit. That's what you've been doing. You've been finding spirit. Now you're learning how to bring this forth to the world. This is what the world needs of you. You are literal medicine. You are the self to the pains of the spirit, to the pains of the heart, to the pains of the soul. You come in like this soft, gentle, flowing person, energy, creature, what, like, what have you. I'm literally seeing like a bunch of little like forest animals, <laughs> like Snow White. And you come in and that's the energy that you have. That's the energy that you bring to the table. That's the energy you bring to the collective is this, this gentle, peaceful energy. And it's, <laughs> I don't think that that's the whole of who you are. I think that you are like the strongest fighter there is. You're like some mixture of Joan of Arc and Wonder Woman and Snow White. It's so crazy. And I know I'm naming a bunch of divine maps feminine energies, but that's what I feel like you're coming into. You're coming into this just deeply empowered divine feminine energy. And this is very beautiful. And that's why you're being asked to really think about, get deep into this consideration of what does the collective need of you? You already know what you need. You've been taking care of your needs. Spirit has been leading you on this path, on this pilgrimage internally for you to take care of your needs. You've been in the winter phase. It's time to come out now because you're, you've been retreating. You've been recharging. You've been seeing all of this. You've now healed it. Now, you know, there are so many paths open to you. There are so many possibilities, so many doors open to you. You have this healing information. How do you want to disseminate it? How do you want to bring it forth? What is needed of you and how can you bring it into the collective? That's what you're being asked here. And that is what this is such a different energy than I expected. I was like, oh, this is going to be all about what you need. But no, you are being called to literally look into the world because you've already looked into yourself. Now look into the world and see where the pieces that you've put together internally for yourself. Look to see where those pieces aren't being reflected back to you in the world. That's where you're needed. Those gaps, those spaces, those holes, that's where you're needed. So let's get the center of your being. This is the core of you at this present moment. Oh my God. River of blessings, release and constraints. <laughs> and another 47. Oh my gosh. 11s and 7s. You guys are mastering the spiritual journey. You are literally mastering the spiritual journey. You, you guys are, this is what you're doing. You're as soon as you let go of this, let go of this constraint, this, this holding yourself back, you're going to find that it doesn't matter which way you go because you're going to know exactly where to go. Um, 
I just want to get a couple of closing cards. This is the Dreams of Gaia Tarot. I honestly, with you guys, we may just... <laughs> Oh, I, I, there's so many things that I want to say, but I really can't. I can't. You guys, you guys are learning how to step up into the leadership role to become that receptive divine feminine and to realize that it doesn't matter which path you take because all paths lead home. All paths lead to spirit. All paths lead to healing. We've got the queen of air. See, you found this deep clarity within yourself, this wisdom, this knowing um, you guys may be drawn to Athena. You may be drawn to Ellen of the Ways. You may be drawn to, um, oh my gosh, you're kidding me. And then we've got the card 11, body and mind. And this one wanted to come out. And this is the five of air. You guys are, this is so strong with the mental energy. On the back, we have the card abundance. Now, this, this deck in particular, and the reason why I want to leave this out for a minute, I'm going to show you this. I want to leave this out because it's card 15, but it's not about the devil. This, this deck in particular, if you look how beautiful this is, she is being protected by the dragon. The dragon is the representative of the divine masculine. She is nurturing this bird's nest. And the mother bird is not attacking the babies or anything like that. She's got a cornucopia. She's got all of this surrounding her, but all she cares about is that bird's nest. All she cares about is that one area of nurturing that she needs to nurture. And what I'm seeing here is you literally found clarity in what, mas what masks you were wearing. The masks that you were wearing that were keeping your body and your mind at odds with each other. And now that you can take that mask off, you can actually, oh my God, intuitively pick up on, on things from other people. The body and the mind with this mask energy, you're not looking at anything. You're just picking it up intuitively. The body and the mind, you can pick up in your mind what someone else's body needs. You literally are a medical intuitive. That's why that came through. You know how to nurture things. You know how to nurture people because you learned how to nurture yourself. It's a beautiful, beautiful energy because all of this air energy. You found such deep clarity, such profound, profound clarity. And I could sit and name deity after deity, but it's almost like you just embodied them all. But we're getting Mercury energy too. Like, oh my gosh, the synchronicities here are just insane. You guys are so deeply aligned right now to this understanding and this awareness and this balance energy. Whatever, whatever sojourn you went on, this, this journey to learn how to take care of yourself, the more that you continue to do this, to take care of yourself, the greater you're going to see that it doesn't matter which direction you take. It, it's not about the direction. It's not about the action. It's about just deciding to take a step. Every step that you take forward is healing. Every move that you make is healing. Every word that you speak Every, like literally down to the syllable of the word is infused with this healing energy. This is beautiful. You may be finding yourself channeling new types of healing, healing that you can't actually find out in the world. Don't hesitate away from that. You're the one that's meant to bring this forth into the world is what I'm hearing. You have such a profound, profound mental connection here to spirit, to yourself, to the collective, to this wisdom, to this healing energy. You have this within you. And as long as you believe in yourself, all you have to do at any given point in time where it feels like you're not really sure which direction to go or what to do next, sit back, become the observer, do this retreat and recharge again because it's going to help open your energy field back up and you say, spirit, please show me where I am needed the most. And as soon as you get an insight, trust it and go. And it is literally 47 degrees on my computer right now. You guys are going into such a beautiful new beginning. This winter phase for you is definitely ending. 
I, I want you to know that I can feel it. I can feel, I can feel it. All right, pile one, this is all I'm seeing for you. This has been such a beautiful, profound reading. I want to say thank you so much for being here. I want to say thank you to your guides and mine for facilitating the connection between our energies. I want to say thank you so much to spirit. Spirit, <sighs> even when I'm not feeling the greatest physically, you still, you still work so well with me to bring these messages forth. And every time I do this, I always feel better. So I want to say thank you so much for these gifts and these blessings that I get to share with the collective. Thank you. Pile one, thank you again for being here. I love you guys all. If this resonated, please hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. That way you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. In the description box below, you'll find links to my author page as well as links to donate to my channel or book a personal reading. Let us know in the comment section below how this resonated. Interact, this is a very interactive community and I love to see everybody working together and working with each other. It is such a beautiful experience. All right, I love you guys. I'm so excited for you. Good luck and I will see you at my next reading. Bye. Hello, pile two. If you chose the second rune stone, the Thurisaz rune stone, as well as the cards Ben 13 and 7 Ook. This is your message from your Mayan ancestors. I did want to start with the Thurisaz rune um, because it's been a repeating one on my channel and it talks about both Thor and Thorn, but it is the primal vital force and that correlates to Mars energy. Now the Ben card also correlates to Mars energy. It's all about the spine, um, red, your legs, rooting, grounding. But there's this energy, this essence of divine masculine motion. And then we come into the Ook card, <clears throat> which is the mystical channel. Now the Thurisaz rune, not only is it that primal vital force. It's also about a thorn. It's about the reactionary nature that we can have. The Mayan, the Mayan ancestors for this pile in particular are telling you to learn a new channel. Um, it kind of came out harsher than I meant it to. They, they want you to learn how to channel this energy in a new way. Okay. So when I was preparing for your pile, I needed a nap. Like I just, all of a sudden I got hit with this wave of exhaustion. And when I woke up, I felt like I was floating. I kept telling my, I kept telling David because he was home for his lunch break. I looked at him and I said, I feel like there's a helium balloon in my head. And this has happened before when I'm getting like massive levels of downloads. And he suggested that I ground. Well, I tried my normal grounding and it didn't work. And then all of a sudden, I just walked out my front door, shut the door, and went on a mile jog thereabouts. And by the end of it, I was literally pushing myself sprinting. Now, if you guys can hear, like, my voice is still pretty raw. I'm still not feeling the greatest. <laughs> I, like, I'm coughing and, and not feeling the greatest. So me going on a run in this physical state was really unexpected. But my body needed that outlet. And this tells me a lot about the energy that you're in where you have, I feel this pent up energy, this pent up, like I need to expel this in some way. And this kind of pent up energy is so powerful and it's powerful in a good way or it's powerful in a bad way. And it depends on the way in which you channel. Now the seven in the ook is all about a mystical channel. And this tells me that you guys have these like really, really intense, powerful spiritual gifts. You guys, and it, it's trying, what I'm getting is it's actually trying to ground into you, trying to root into you so that every movement that you make in your life becomes a mystical experience. But that can't happen if you are reactive it can't happen if you're afraid. It can't happen if you're fighting it. And that's where that Thurisaz rune comes in, where it's saying, 
every rose has its thorns. We understand that there have been hardships in your life. We understand that it feels as though every time you get your hopes up, every time you start looking at this or that as though it's going to happen and then it doesn't happen, it's like somebody shoves a thorn right underneath your fingernail. And that's one of the most painful things. It's like having a, like your nail ripped out. It's so painful. And it sticks with you. That kind of pain, it sticks with you. It lasts. It's like a torturous pain that lasts. And then you don't want to keep engaging because the last time that pain was there, it was so long and it was so enduring. And how do I do this? How do I keep going? And yet you do, you keep going. That's what your, that's what your Mayan ancestors are, are telling you. You keep going. You understand that being a mystical channel means that there are going to be moments in which you are faced with pains and, and hardships that you can't fathom and you can't avoid, but it doesn't mean that you're doing anything wrong. And it doesn't mean that this world is not what you hope and pray for it to be. It is that. It is that, but you have to get out of your own way and you can't keep shoving those thorns inside of yourself when your guides and your ancestors have been trying to tell you, trying to bring forth this message of awareness to you that you are shifting into a time frame in which all adversity is now overcome and you don't have to keep being this way. You're now becoming the thorn and they're trying to get you to see that you have the ability to elevate above it. And for some of you, for some of you, this is something that you have realized already. For others of you, this is something that has been trying to come through and it's, I'm getting distort, I'm getting the word distorted. Um, I'm getting fragmented. It's as though the messages are coming in, but you're only hearing bits and pieces of it or you're there, they're coming in through multiple sources. And so it's like a puzzle piece. And if you go to them in the wrong order, then it gets distorted. It gets jumbled up. And I apologize if you guys can hear the dogs barking outside. I have my windows open because it's 70 degrees <laughs> or well, it's 60, 65 degrees, but I'm rounding up because it's North Dakota and you do round up on days like this. And it's November 1st when I'm filming this. So for it to be in the 60s, 70s in November in North Dakota, it's super rare. Anyway, I'm going to try and cut out as much of the background noise as I can, but there's going to be some, and I, I just wanted to apologize. So your, your ancestors, especially your Mayan ancestors, want you to realize that you can either embody the rose with the thorns or you can embody the essence of the corn, the stock of corn, the abundant nature of corn, and corn is yellow, yellow corn is all about that personal power, that personal empowerment. And, and it grows on that green stock, which represents the heart. So you're growing your personal empowerment directly on your sense of love, directly on something that you love. That's how you become empowered. And so what I'm getting from this is as beautiful as roses are, as profound as they are, as meaningful as they are, the corn is the sustenance. The corn is the prosperity. The corn is what gives vitality, what gives life, what gives mysticality. And that's what they're asking you to really embrace is the corn rather than the flower. Your higher self understands the nature of the beauty way. So here we have your higher self. Here we have the essence of your lower self or inner self. Yeah, your lower self. And then this is the past and this is the future. And this is the core of your being. And it all relates to this message here. Now, Ben talks about the, the nature of prosperity and abundance in the corn stock and how that really is how you overcome adversity. It is a message from your ancestors that in order to overcome the adversities that you've been in, overcome those thorns, that way of being, you have to see a new way. You have to realize that there is another way of operating in the world. There is another way of feeling and, and moving through the world. It's, it's this essence of it will be okay. It's meant to be okay. And you are overcoming adversity, but you have to allow yourself to overcome adversity. And if you guys give me just a moment, I'm going to 
pause and let my dogs in because Chunk is freaking out at people in the back alley. All right, I am back. So we are having a little bit of technical issues. Um, my computer has been running kind of off and on lately as far as um, it's it's just kind of temperamental with audio visual. So I did want to preface this. I think I said that, but I've tried to film your guys' pile like four times. And so I can't remember which one we're on. But what we were talking about is the thorn versus the corn. Your higher self is in this essence of the beauty way. It's about seeing the beauty in everything. But if you look, this is a lotus flower, I believe. But it, it's definitely not a rose. A lotus grows out of the mud. It knows it knows the depths of darkness. It knows the, the hard places, the painful places. It understands those. And it grows and it thrives in that state. Now, you also have the dragonfly above it. And the dragonfly is one of the most ancient creatures ever. And Mayan civilization is one of the most ancient civilizations. And to have them in your blood and in your system and in your soul, it makes you an ancient soul yourself. You guys may also be connected to another pile. I was getting that a little bit and then it went away and then it came back. With this, what I'm seeing because of this mystical channel, I'm seeing that you guys have this pent up energy and your energy is, it, it's almost hard to really, I'm having a hard time navigating through it. I'm having a hard time channeling through it right now. Um, and I had, I literally like it's, I had to go and run in order to break through this energy barrier with you guys. I had to physically put myself into your energy. And it's not a bad thing. I really like it. It's um, it's like a hypercharged energy. But right now, your Mayan ancestors are calling you to soften and to realize that there are two ways of going. Now is the time to grow certain things. Now is the time to see that you have done this fight. You have fought this battle. You have already overcome this journey. You have already overcome this war. Why are you still fighting this? Why are you still battling against forces that are not there any longer? It's time to let that go is what they're saying. And that speaks directly to this seer and it says, see beyond the current situation. It's asking you to see beyond what your eyes can perceive and allow your third eye to open, allow your crown to open and allow the awareness to come in to see that everything in this world is so inherently beautiful. I have days where I will wake up and I will come outside and I will find myself in tears. I actually, I actually found myself in tears this morning. Um, Thinking about an email that I got from Celtic Fairy Tarot and one of the things she said to me and what she didn't know was she sent me a YouTube video link and it had the song Unstoppable by Sia in it. And what she didn't know is I have this I have this playlist called Empowered Woman because I needed it at, at some point I needed to have all those empowering songs because my life was filled with thorns and it wasn't filled with beauty. So I had to create the beauty. And I was thinking about the fact that she had no idea that this song, this, this particular song had come into my awareness in the past two months from my guides. It was gifted to me into my awareness from my guides as I was pushing myself through some of the hardest shadow work moments of my life, pushing myself to see the, the ways in which I was hurting myself over and over and over again inside my own mind and inside my own heart because I had been so used to others hurting me over and over and over again that I had to quite literally break myself down. And I've had so many moments in which I've said, I am so tired of breaking myself down because nobody else will break themselves down. So I have to do it to make everything better. But that was such a shit mentality. It was such a shit mentality. I didn't need to do that. 
Who said I needed to do that? I did. I told myself that I had to change because I wasn't good enough, but that's not the truth. And then I woke up this morning and that song, that song was playing as I was going back after dropping my kids off, I was going back to pick up David from work. And that song was playing on my playlist and I found myself just crying, just crying because it was like, Somebody sees how hard I work. Somebody else sees it. And it's a, com- it, for all intents and purposes, she's a complete stranger. She's never met me in person. She knows me through my work, but she doesn't know me personally. She knows what I share with the world, but she doesn't know me personally. And that's so, it's so huge. You guys are my pile that does not see the truth of how amazing you are. How gifted, how talented, how skilled, how mystical you truly are because the world has beat you down so often that it it takes so much for you to believe it in yourself. You may be the people that go through phases where you have to come to pick a cards and you have to come to pick a cards and be picked back up. And that's not a bad thing and I'm not judging you for it. And please don't feel guilty for that because I've done that. I've been there. There are moments where I just want to hear somebody say something positive about me because I get so tired of telling myself the positive things all the time when I can't believe it. And that's the problem is that I have a hard time believing it. That I go to pick a cards and don't guilt yourself for what you do to make yourself feel better. What you're being asked right now is to realize that you can soften yourself and see that there is beauty in the world in everything all the time. I just broke through your energy. (laughs) All right, let's look at the past and how we got here. So the card 38 with Mystical Shaman. Again, you guys might be drawn to another pile. And then we have High Priest, Intend and Create. Okay, now this makes a lot of sense. Um, I want to talk about the falcon first. So with a falcon, for a falcon to be sitting here with a high priest, it's not moving. It's not trying to fly away. This is a falcon that has been tamed. And in order for a falcon to be tamed, it has to be put in the dark. They hood falcons in order for the falcon to become accustomed to the smell, the sound, and the, the feel of its owner, of its falconeer. And In that way, the bird and the human become like one. That is why they have that connection. And if you look up here with the mystical shaman, he actually has a nose that looks like a beak. It's literally you are learning to tame the wildness inside of you, the observer, so that you wouldn't react anymore. You needed to learn how to tame this this creative drive that you have within you. But the mystical shaman doesn't work in normal ways. The mystical shaman is all things in all places, in all times, in all spaces. And it moves and flows and fluxes and nobody can temper it down or determine what it is or label it or define it. It just is. The mystical shaman is the one that goes into all times and takes inventory. And there is is what they call taking inventory in shamanism is to go into your past and to literally make a list of all the things that are hurting you internally and then to cross it off one by one essentially and be like, okay, this is no longer going to hurt me. This is no longer going to hurt me. And you go down and down and down and down the list. And it it takes a lot. And that in and of itself takes great strength of character. It takes great strength of duty. It takes great strength of focus. This is about you becoming an internal force of strength, harnessing your divine masculine and your your animalistic nature in order to have a true creation in a divine feminine way. And I have to tell you guys, I can see it. I can feel it. I can hear these messages, but I am not entirely sure what this means. I have to be honest about that. I don't necessarily know what they mean by create divine femininely. I, yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm very, I'm very in awe of you. 
because there is something so very ancient about you. But the more that you ground, you're having this issue with the the difference between true grounding and being too much in the physical world. You're a person, you're a soul who is meant to be in both realms all the time and not have it be a hindrance. And this is a natural thing that comes to you, but in your mind, you tell yourself, but I have to do this, 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 and this. You tell yourself that you have to do all these steps. And because you tell yourself you have to do all these steps, you have to do all these steps. But what you're being called to realize is that you don't actually have to do them all. This is your natural essence is being between both worlds. If your natural essence is to be, be is to be between both worlds, then you are naturally tethered to this world as you traverse the other realms. This is powerful. You guys are very powerful souls. Let's see where you, where your Mayan ancestors are calling you to. We have the card 25 with the holy mountain that reduces to a seven. And this one reduces to an 11. And she, <laughs> damn it, shapeshifter, transform and unveil your gifts. I'm sorry, guys. I literally wanted to call you guys a shapeshifter and then I didn't because of this mystical shaman. And it's one of those where I didn't say it, but I felt it. This, you're, you're being called to go on a journey. Now, this could be an inner journey. This could be an outer journey. I'm hearing shamanic journey. Um, there's actually a lot of shamanic journeys that you can do on YouTube. I love doing shamanic drum journeys. I absolutely love doing them. Um, the first the first one that I did that was not guided was one of the most profound experiences of my life because I found myself in a cave and I found out that my my spirit animal, my power animal or spirit animal is a phoenix. And I never once expected that. I really did truly expect the owl because it's my favorite bird. But you can't fight a vision. Um, but what I'm seeing here is you guys, you guys are so deeply in tuned with the earth. But you are also so, so connected to the higher realms. You don't feel quite human. But you don't feel quite starseed either. You feel other. Other is the best way that I can describe this. Um, you guys may be called to gypsies, the Romani people. Um, you may have felt like a nomad. You may have had urges to travel, to go on pilgrimages. And that's kind of where I'm feeling you're being pulled. But it's, I don't feel... I don't feel like it's outside of yourself. This holy mountain just, this holy mountain to me feels very um, otherworldly. If I were to describe it, I'd actually say you're being called a Mount, Mount Olympus, which I, I got nothing. Like that's just the feel that I get from it is you're being called to Mount Olympus. Your transform, this, this shapeshifter card is what we were talking about with this, with the rose and the corn. You guys have some incredibly mystical energies, but there is something here that your Mayan ancestors want you to see and not hear. This is that falcon thing. Um, you may still be in the, oh, you're hooded still. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense because with this seer, yeah, you're hooded. Okay, so when I what I talked about with a falcon, when they're when they're taming a falcon, when they're training a falcon, you get hooded. Um, sometimes in the spiritual community, you can hear about the cloak of Christ. When you have the cloak of Christ put down upon you, you are essentially being it. it you're being cloaked. You're being you're being hidden. By the spiritual realm. The spiritual realm is hiding you from the outside world. In a way. They're making you. Um, they're, it, it's kind of like a disconnect from the outside world. But not entirely. It's in a way to help you. It, it's like your higher self is training you for something. I'm, 
I'm doing my best here, guys. This is so intense. This is so intense. I'm really excited because I can feel like this is an energy that is so incredible. I'm going to have to watch this back multiple times to even, even grasp it. But I feel like you guys are hooded like the falcon by your higher self. Your higher self has you hooded because your 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 energies are changing. You're melding. You're you're being molded. But all of this, like I said, there's this strength card energy. I would call you guys Leos, but you don't feel like Leos. You actually feel more like Sagittarius to me. And you don't have to have that placement for this to resonate. Because with a shapeshifter card, I should say Gemini, but I don't feel that either. There's something different about you. And when, when I feel that energy, it's very Sagittarius. But this is this mystical shaman. It's like you got a glimpse of yourself with all of everything, all of your past lives, all of your um, future incarnation. Everything was just blended together. It was like you saw yourself on the absolute essence, highest level of your soul in a vision and you've been trying to get to that vision you have intended to create that vision in this world and now it's coming forth you're being transformed this shapeshifter this is being done to you and i know i know there's that saying it's being done for you not to you this is being done to you from your higher self and it is for your highest good and it's not a bad thing. I actually feel like it's like um, trimming the thorns of a, of a rose. So if you go to a, a florist and you buy a dozen roses, the thorns are gone. They've already trimmed all the roses. Your higher self is the florist. You're going to get the, the bouquet here. I hope that makes sense. Let's see the core of your being here. <laughs> Earth magic, fearlessness, removing obstacles. That is the thorns. See, you're overcoming adversity. Oh my gosh. These messages, like they, I have never experienced this energy. I did not know fully what to expect when, I, when the Mayans came to me and were like, can you please do this? Um, and they've been asking, like we've been talking or working together back and forth for quite a while about doing this. And I have struggled a lot. All right, we've got the two of earth. We have the journey card. Yes, see, look. God, you guys are coming into the light finally. See, again, this is that hooded energy. And then we have the hero. Removing obstacles, the hero. Literally, you guys, you guys are, are finally shifting. I can, I can feel it. As soon as I got to the core of your being, I could feel it. Okay, everything is coming back into harmony. You, you've, been, you've been on this journey, but remember when I said you're being called somewhere and it felt like a shamanic journey. I want you guys to go after this video and go Google shamanic journeys if you have time to do it. Otherwise, seriously, make a note of it. And then after you go on a shamanic journey, um, do some sort of like drum journey into, in, I'm actually seeing one that's like, a fire ceremony, but I'm also seeing like a, a forest one. So use your discernment. But this is what I'm hearing. Do a, a shamanic journey and then go for a walk outside. It doesn't matter how hot it is. It doesn't matter how cold it is. You need to be outside. There's something that you're going to hear when you're outside that is actually going to open up this complete and utter awareness. It's going to be like all your eyes open and the hood will be removed you will no longer be hooded. This is so intense. I've never, ever, ever had the energy of the falcon come through, but there's something ancient that is ready to come out, out of you, come out into your present, into your conscious awareness. And I'm seeing dragonflies everywhere for you guys. Um, and that was something that I noted every day when I make my bed, I, I have through pillows, I, I love pillows. But I have throw pillows that have dragonflies. And I was thinking about that today was like, I see dragonflies every day. I love that. And I didn't realize that it was actually correlated to you guys because you are the dragonfly. 
So every day that you get up and you look in the mirror, you're literally looking at the dragonfly. You're looking at the ancient. You're looking at the the um, indomitable, interminable. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Spirit. Can I please have some help? Um, immortal. Thank you. <laughs> You wouldn't think that that would be a hard word for me, but man, my brain, your energy is, your energy is on a completely different level than anything that I have ever channeled before. I am telling you like this energy right here, whatever this, this earth magic, it's like that you, you have some of the oldest energy that this earth has ever, it, it you feel like the origins. I've only touched this energy once or twice in my life. Um, only once or twice in my life. And and the last time I, I touched this energy, it took me about three months to wrap my head around how it, how it felt. Um, and you guys have this within you. And it wants to be awoken. It wants to come out. This, this origin energy, it wants to come out. This is amazing. All the obstacles are being removed for you. Your, it, I, I'm just hearing surrender, surrender to becoming the corn. The stock is there. You are the corn. You are prosperous. You're overcoming adversity. Allow the thorns to be cut away. This is time for you to allow it to be cut away. So if you feel blinded, if you feel lost, allow yourself to be guided for you are blending together all things into one so that you may rise. That is your message. Wow, pile two. Pile two. Uh, this was this was crazy. This was amazing. Um, thank you so much. <laughs> I I don't know if I'm fangirling or what. Like I'm fangirling over your energy right now. This is crazy. Thank you so much for being here. I want to say thank you to your guides, and my guides, for facilitating the connection between our energies because this is so cool. Um, thank you, spirit for bringing in all of these new energies and helping me learn in a new way and channel in a new way. This is just so fun for me. And I, I just, I feel so passionate and, and inspired by this pile. So thank you for allowing me to be a messenger for you for them. Pile two, if this resonated, please hit that like button. Let me know in the comment section below. I really want to know about the Falcon. All right. I just, I really want to know about the Falcon and, and the Romanis. I just keep hearing Falcon and Romanis. Um, please let me know. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming readings. Uh, down in the description box, there are links to my author page on Amazon. So you can grab that Mars retrograde guidebook with you guys having all this Mars energy. It probably will help you with this thorn issue. And don't forget, or <laughs> yeah, don't forget, don't forget there are also other links in my description box. Wow. It's one of those days. Um, <laughs> there are links to donate to my channel if you feel so inclined and links to book a personal reading with me. All right. Pile two. I love you guys so much. I love your energy so much. Go for a run. I know that I'm going to go and do some grounding work. But thank you again. I love you guys so much. Bye. Hello, pile three. If you chose the third rune and cards, the rune Uruz, as well as Ix and Uak, this is your message from your Mayan ancestors. Now, I did want to preface this with a couple of things. First of all, there may be a lot of background noise. Um, it is as of right now, it is November 1st when I'm filming this and in the mid 60s to 70s outside and in North Dakota, that's super, super rare. <laughs> so I am getting as much of the fresh air into my home as humanly possible because it just feels phenomenal. Um, and I'm also having just a little bit of audio, visual, technical lag. Essentially, I'm I'm having some lag between, see, like I'm moving my hands and yeah. So there's just a little bit of lag going on and I did want to make sure that you guys are aware. So I'm going to try and keep my hands moving as less as I possibly can while we channel here. Um, these messages have been absolutely 
off the charts, out of this world, um, <laughs> totally unexpected and at the same time completely and utterly expected just because this is how my energy works. All that being said, you guys chose two very differing energies. You chose the Uru's rune, which is Orox or the oxen. And you chose Ix, which is the ocelot, the jaguar. Now, Uak, this, this frequency card, Uak, is actually creativity. So you have the, the jaguar of creativity. This is all about the mystical. This is about the shamanic journey. This is about the shamanic healer inside of you awakening and coming into being within your entire body and your entire soul, but also your entire life. Now, the Ix card with the Jaguar calls to you to balance out having harmonious relationships as well as really diving deep into your inner world and realizing the magic that you have inside of yourself. And I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. I almost put these cards back and asked Spirit to give me new ones because I did not want to be biased. <laughs> when it came to the Eeks and the Uak card, because these are actually my birth signs for the Mayans. This is the energy that I was born into. And spirit went, no, this is why it came out. Because I resonate with you guys so deeply because I understand you. And, and that is something that is so rare for people like us, for someone to understand each one of us when you resonate with the jaguar, you resonate with the dark. You resonate with the night. You resonate with the shadow. You understand the darkness of all things, but you also see how beautiful the darkness truly is. I, I used to, I used to hide away from the darkness. I used to bemoan it. I used to say, oh, it's so terrible. And then I realized that the void space is nothing more or less than the cosmic cloud of creation. And it became my favorite place to just languish. At night, I used to be afraid of the dark. I genuinely used to be afraid of the dark because I had suffered so many traumas and so many um, nights of terror in my past that I was so afraid to go to sleep. I would have to have the TV on and I would have to have a bedside lamp on. And I didn't even realize I was afraid of the dark until my husband told me. And he didn't tell me until after I had already faced my fear and, and overcome it. And in that way, I had such great respect for him because he allowed me to create my own healing. And that's what you do. You create your own healing. You go into the darkness and you see it for what it is and then you overcome it, but you don't have to define it. You don't have to label it. You just see it for what it is. It's fear. Fear is fear is fear. You can label it as whatever you want to. It can be a phobia. It can be anxiety. It can be depression, it can be sadness, it can be jealousy, it can be rage, but all of it at its essence is just fear. And fear is only there because we have been conditioned to believe it needs to be there. But in reality, fear is just simply the polarity of love. And we live in a world of polarity. So once we understand that, then we understand that if we can hold that level of fear, that depth, that darkness, that that void of fear, then we hold just as much love within us. And when we realize that we hold that much love, then imagine what magic you hold because love is magic. Love is magic. And you hold all of that magic within you. All you have to do is allow yourself to surrender to creation. Now you have the Uru's rune and that talks about Aurox. And I always get brought back to the House of Night series. And it's a book series, but it also, they have a deck of cards. It's called The Wisdom of the House of Night. And I've used that deck series, but I love these books. I love these books so much. I have read and reread and reread them. And Aurox is actually in those books. And it's a creation. It's man and beast. It's man and bull. And when he gets angry, he turns into the bull. And that is the essence of Taurian energy. But Taurian energy is ruled by Venus. And Venus is all about beauty and love and creativity, fertility, and, and all of the, the beautiful essence and blessings of the world. You are this beautiful, creative being. 
And the longer that you allow yourself to languish in that darkness as the jaguar, as that pure divine feminine, that sleek divine feminine energy, and that's what you are. You are sleek. You are, I just heard on fleek, and I don't say that ever. (laughs) But you have this sleekness to your energy that you can just slip into these places and find the key. You find the keys to unlocking creative outlets, creative expression. It's such a beautiful essence. And there is something within you that is awakening to this innate creativity within you. And it's silent. It's quiet. And that may be why you feel more called to the quiet, to the outside world. When I say outside, I mean outdoors. I mean Mother Nature. I mean hearing the birds and the trees and the squirrels and the wind in the leaves and hearing the essence of what the the wind sounds like outside and what it sounds like to hear the scurrying of creatures in the grass, things like that. That may make you feel absolutely alive, like electrified. The outside world feels electric to you right now because in reality, you're the one that's electric and you're bringing that into your entire world because as within, so without. So what you have created within yourself is now being created in the outside world. And everywhere you turn, there's something new within your creative expression that you're seeing reflected back to you. And this is a beautiful, beautiful energy. So in these cards, what we have is these on this side are the past cards. These are the future cards. And this is your present. This is your higher self. This is who you are right now. And this is the core and the center of your being. We'll get to the center of your being absolute last, but I want to address the higher and the lower. So your higher self is in this giveaway energy. And this is the card 23, which reduces to a five. But every time I see the 23, I think of the um, mystical or the not the mystical shaman. This is a mystical shaman. I think of the shaman dream oracle deck. And in that one, the card 23 is the wheel of fortune. And it's about plenty and blessings. And so every time I see the number 23, now I think of wheel of fortune. And I think of literally like fortune. And this giveaway, what she's doing is she's she's sending up the sun. It, it's like she's giving away the sun. She's giving away her, her sense of self her identity, her labels, all of this. And this this isn't gender specific. As you guys may know, I mean, for most of you, I, I think you guys are pretty well attuned to pick a cards, but I'm just going to clarify here. We work with energy on this channel. And so when I say her, I'm first of all referring to the woman in the card. Secondly, I am referring to your divine feminine energy right now, because right now your higher self is embodying the divine feminine and your lower self or you right now watching this is embodying your divine masculine. And that's a beautiful, beautiful thing because you can actually see a physical representation on these cards of the polarity that you are holding within as well as the polarity that you contain. So what I'm seeing here is it's this giving up of who you are in order to embrace the truth of the self. You are giving up the labels, the definitions, the the titles, the hats, the masks. You're giving that up, you're giving it out. But also with this giveaway card, it's almost as though you're just shedding. You're shedding and shedding and shedding. I'm actually seeing a cat shedding fur, which, you know, unsurprisingly, there's literally a cat (laughs) for <laughs> my cats are everywhere. But with this, I'm seeing you giving things up. And if you've been called to do this and you've been afraid to do it, let me tell you something. Let me tell you a story. I've been called to give up um, taking my riddle in to allow my creativity to flow more naturally. And I've been so scared to do that because I have severe ADD, ADHD combined type severe. I've been tested so many times. It's outrageous. Every two years I have to get tested, but the medicine stopped helping me. It started hindering me. It started creating this complex that I could only create when I was on the medicine. 
And spirit was like, no, this is not helping you anymore. It got you to where you needed to be. And now it's time to let it go. But I was so scared to let it go because what if I, what if I couldn't focus? What if I couldn't create? And I have been off of it for two and a half weeks now, three weeks now. And I feel more creative, more inspired, more energetic, and more myself than ever before. I feel closer to who I was as a child than ever before in my life. And it was the scariest thing to do ever. And I'm not a medical doctor, so please, please, please understand. I am simply telling my story to you guys. I am not encouraging you to stop taking medications that you need. In any way, shape, or form, please consult your medical doctor before you do anything like that. I always talk to my doctor before I make any medical choices because me and my doctor are a team. <laughs> but I also gave up smoking. I gave up drinking. I gave up vaping. I quit all my vices. I, I, stopped, I stopped drinking soda. My biggest vice is coffee and tea now. And, and candy, but even that I've cut down a lot. So it's, I, there are things that when you know it's time to give them up, give them away, when you know it's time, you can feel that fear. And that's that fear that you have within you, that depth of fear that you know so well. But remember that the, the fear is anchored to love. They are polar opposites, which means they are two sides of the same coin. They exist together always. So all you have to do is see it from a different perspective. See it from a perspective of love. Because I'm telling you guys, when you make the changes that you need to make, and I don't know what it is that you're called to give up, your higher self knows, and so do you, I just heard. I just heard you know this. You already know. Whether it's something hard or not. And please know, I, I need to clarify this because I'm hearing it really like ringing loudly. This is not about a person. This is about a thing. It could be a mindset. Um, it could be a mentality. It could be a, um, a subconscious background noise going on. Um, I don't like saying programming often. I will every once in a while, but I think of it more like background noise. So if you go out in nature and you're out in nature, nature, sometimes you can still find places in this world where there isn't the hum. It's very rare. It's very, very rare to not find the hum. But the more that you tap into your gifts, into your intuition, the more you hear the hum and it's the electric hum that this world has become. The internet floats everywhere. It's in the air no matter what. And this isn't conspiracy theories. This is energetics. You can feel it everywhere. You can hear it. So when you can get into nature and get away from the power lines and away from the cell phones and away from the computers and it, granted, guys, I know I literally make my living online. <laughs> I get this. <laughs> Trust me. But when you can get away from that, and you can hear, you hear different. You hear different. And then you start understanding what it's like to tap into a more natural essence. And the jaguar is that natural essence. Now you also have to think this is Eeks. It's also the magician. And the magician creates using the natural elements. Whatever it is that you're being called to give away, to give up, whatever it is, it may feel big, but that's your mind telling you that it is big. Your mind creates that because the truth of it is, it is a small drop in the bucket of what is to come. And you're right now beginning to embody this star ancestor. And it says, follow, follow the voice of your soul. <laughs> follow the voice of your soul, not follow the voice. Um, yes. I am mixing my letters up apparently. Follow the voice of your soul. You may be drawn to Syrian star seeds. You may be drawn to Andromedan star seeds. You may be drawn to Pleiades. You may be drawn to Mintakins. You may be drawn to the Egyptians, Lemurians, Atlanteans, all of which are 
intricately connected here to the Mayans. So the Mayans really are, um, from my understanding, the Mayans are more deeply connected with Assyrian starseeds than any others. They were very focused on communication and Syrians are very communication focused. And what this is telling me is right now you're learning this voice of your soul. This is why when we talk about going out in nature, we're talking about hearing, hearing what the soul of Mother Earth sounds like. Because the more you attune yourself to Mother Earth, the more you come back into your natural creative essence. Now, for me, the reason why I shared my story about Ritalin is because I quit. I, I just, I quit cold turkey. I stopped taking it. I needed to. And I feel more creative. I feel that spark, that inspiration. I'm crocheting again and my house is clean and I'm minimizing because I'm not feeding myself with this mentality of lack. And that's what the Ritalin was doing to me. It was giving me lack mentality. I have to take this, otherwise I lack creativity. But creativity is your natural essence. So whatever it is that you are feeding into this lack mentality, you're being asked to transform it because you know the darkness, which means you know that how to transform it. You are the magician. You are magic. You are mystical. So let's find out what came before to get you to this point, because where you're at right now is literally transition. I, like I'm hearing transition. 21 with the gatherer. I love that. And heart guardian. Love and let yourself be loved. You are amazing. You have been gathering back to yourself every piece of yourself. Um, I don't know if you've been doing this consciously or not, but what I'm seeing is someone who is very, very skilled at soul retrieval. And you may not know that you're gifted at this, but that's what you're doing. You're, and it's, you're not just doing it for yourself. Oh my gosh, revelation. <laughs> you're gifting. What you do in this world, the giveaway energy that you're you're call, being called to do, part of that has to do with things that you know that are pieces of other people's souls. They're not pieces of yours. They're pieces of other people's souls. This is my pile. And it's been a really long time since I've done readings where I've had messages within the piles, but now I'm starting to understand that spirit is having me go through this phase. And I've seen other readers go through this phase, which makes me really excited. <laughs> Because I love resonating with you guys. I love it. But you're gathering pieces of your soul and putting it back together. You, your, your heart, your heart was shattered when you came into this world. It wasn't shattered in this life. It was shattered before. You intentionally incarnated with a shattered heart chakra. And that is, I, I'm sorry that like, I know, I know I shouldn't sound that excited, but I am because you literally have gathered all the pieces of it together. You've gathered all the pieces of that shattered heart chakra you incarnated with and you put it all together and you literally have embodied love. I told you, you hold the depths of fear because you were born into fear. You weren't born into love. You were born into fear. And too many people don't understand that you can be born into fear. You, you aren't always born into love. And I know that. I know what that's like. I've been there. I felt it. But you were born into fear. Your energy. You may have had the most loving home. Some of you truly had the most loving home and can't understand why you have felt so broken your entire life. It's because you incarnated in a soul contract to be, in, to be in the energy of fear, to embody it, to personify the energy of fear because you came here to gather all the pieces back from every, every incarnation prior. This may be your last one. This may be your ascension. And when I say ascension, we throw that word around, but I am talking, you are going to be an ascended master in the future. As in, people will be calling to you. After you pass in this life, people will be calling to you to work with you. You will approach others to work with them. You will pick and choose the souls that are right 
You will help design this world, but you will do it from an ascended position. Much the same as Hilarion and Saint Germain and the archangels and Christ. You are an ascended master in this world, but you're not an ascended master yet. You just know it on a soul level. That's why you feel this star ancestor, because you know in this life, you came here to embody this, to pull all these pieces together, to put them all back together so that you could elevate that way. You're literally in this transition phase. In this transition phase, because you have picked up all the pieces and put them all back together and you did it on your own. You And <clears throat> when I say you did it on your own, I do genuinely mean like nobody picked the pieces up for you. Nobody, nobody could have. You could have been surrounded by people cheering you on and none of them would have mattered because none of them could feel the fear. None of them could feel that darkness. This is beyond trauma. This is beyond PTSD. This is beyond anything. This is spiritual. This is what they define as spiritual warfare, but you bore, you bore yourself into this. As a soul, you chose to be born into this. It wasn't warfare in the, in the way that we think of it in this world. It was internal warfare, internal dialogues, internal monsters, chaos, tornadoes. Just destruction, utter destruction over and over and over again. All because you are the true essence of love. And in order to be the truest essence of love, you have to experience the truest essence of its polarity. And that's why you were born into this world. Because for that to happen, you have to experience the, the alternative. If you think about Jesus Christ, in order for him to embody being divinity and being seen that way, he had to also experience the greatest depravity. To be as forgiving, he had to be hung, tortured. He had to experience the polarities in order to be so too must you, so too must I, so too must us all along our journey. But you, you are at the tail end of this incarnation cycle process of your soul. And I feel very much a sense of calm now from you, as though this is a quiet reassurance that, yes, you knew this. Yes, this confirmation is there. And yes, it will be okay. You can always choose to come back if you want, but you are doing it in this lifetime. And I see it right here. You have gathered the pieces of your heart back, the pieces of your soul back, and you are starting to help others do the same. This is beautiful energy. Let's see where you're heading. We have Shield Maiden, make plans and focus. Very Viking energy. Oh my gosh, 28 in the Jaguars. The Jaguar. It's time to get your creativity on, babe. That's all I can say. That's all I'm feeling. It's literally like, all right, what do you want? What do you want to create? Whatever you want to create, now is the time. You have that sleek wisdom, that expression, that awareness. Look how fierce these two are. You are ready. You have gathered all the softness and now you know the darkness and you can harness both. You have given up what needs to be given up, and now it's time for you to move forward. This is incredible. I honestly don't have anything else because we've covered it. Let's find out the core of your being. 21, guide the illuminated path. What did I say? You're going to be an ascended master. Look at her hand. She's literally like, it looks like a lightsaber to me. She's like magically lighting up her path. You are magic. You may have been drawn to another pile. I didn't get that very much with you guys, but you may have been. If you were, go check it out. But for the most part, what I'm seeing here is you guys are here to heal the earth. You're here to show the earth what it's like to be illuminated in this world, in this modern world. 
You are an ancient mystic shaman walking in the modern world. You are fey. You are an earth angel. You, you're just, you're, it's like you're all of it. You're everything. Have, are you one of those people that is like, how can I resonate with all of these? Everything sounds right. Everything feels right. Everything fits. I resonate with all of it. And then you, and then you second guess yourself. You second guess yourself and you talk yourself out of it. And that, that's that fear. I can't possibly resonate with all of it. Nobody can do that. We're, who am I to do that? But no, you've pulled all of yourself back together. And now you're like, yeah, no, no I totally claim all of this. This is who I am. This is what I resonate with. This is amazing. You guys, you are literally like, you're in this transition stage. You are becoming a walking guide. Keep going. Look, we've got the six of earth. And look, he's been chained down, but he's only chained down because he, he, he allows himself to be chained down. You're here to free people. You are here to set people free. And we've got desire and the two of fire. Look, harnessing, harnessing your personal power and your creativity. This desire card talks the same. It is all about literally knowing what you desire and knowing that you can have your desires. And you're here to teach people how to have their desires, how to harness it all, how to create the life that they want. Because desire is from the heart. This is the card 20. It, it's the judgment energy. It's knowing, it's knowing that calling of your soul. Follow the voice of your soul. Your soul is calling you to free yourself because you're here as a freedom fighter. You are the revolutionary. You are the shield maiden. You are the one that is here to literally free the heart of the people. You have this energy that like, if you had been alive in the 60s, you would have been out on the streets protesting and you would have made such a huge impact. Some of you might have. <laughs> Some of you might have. And yes, you can incarnate that quickly. Yes, it is possible to incarnate that quickly when you have that elevated level of a soul. An elevated enough soul can incarnate rapidly. You can incarnate twice in the same 150 years. It's not often because usually a soul likes to rest in between, but there are some souls that like to reincarnate quite often. Um, those are the masochistic souls. Um, and if you feel resonance with that, hi, welcome to the family. <laughs> because my soul is the same way. That's one of one of the things that I wrote about in something spiritually catchy is about how my soul is kind of a masochist. Um, <laughs> but I truly like I truly love love this energy. You guys are learning how to harness all aspects of yourself because you you know that the key is literally right there. And the chains aren't holding you back from grabbing the key. Like drop the shit in your hands and let yourself free. You, you have more than just this bowl in your hand. You've got the whole of the world right behind you. All you have to do is turn around. And you know that. And you're here to show people how to do that. You're here to show people how to harness everything that they hold within their hearts, within their souls, and live this life in a state of love because you've experienced exactly the opposite. I'm in awe of you. I'm inspired by you. I know I said this was my pile, but man... Your energies are amazing and it is not quite the same as mine. And I, uh, I just, some of these messages are not for me. Some of them are, but I tell you guys what, you guys are amazing. You guys are absolutely incredible. Please don't doubt what your soul is calling you to do and don't doubt your own strength because you can heal yourself. You can will, you can will a healing into existence in your life. And I am speaking from personal experience. That's literally how I healed. I willed it into my life. I cannot wait to see what you guys create. Please let me know. All right, pile three. This is all I'm seeing or hearing. I just, I'm sitting in awe in, in your energy, really. Um, I want to say thank you so much for being here. Thank you to your guides and my guides for facilitating the connection between us. Thank you 
Thank you, Spirit, for these messages. Thank you also to the Mayan ancestors. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. Um, if this resonated, please hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming readings. Down in the description box, you're going to find links to my author page. You can catch something spiritually catchy on Amazon. And there are links to donate to my channel as well as links to book a personal reading. Let me know. Let all of us know in the comment section below what you've been doing, how you've been gathering these pieces. If you are so inclined to share it with us, we would love to know. All right, Pile 3, thank you again for being here. I love you all. Bye. Hello, Pile 4. If you chose the fourth crystal, the Sawilo crystal or runestone, as well as the Etznab and the Lahun cards, this is your message from your Mayan ancestors. Now, I do want to preface this reading with a couple of things. Um, it is... 70 degrees outside on November 1st in North Dakota, which is like one of the most rare events ever. So I do have all my windows open in my house. <laughs> so there may be some background noise and I do want to apologize if there is background noise. Um, however, it's a beautiful, beautiful fresh air kind of day. And so I definitely want to get that energy into my home before the weather turns cold for the winter. Now, that's the first one. The second the second thing is that there is a bit of a audiovisual delay with the filming today. Um and so for <laughs> for those of you who know, um when I start working through retrograde guidebooks, I end up getting put into the energy of the retrograde guidebooks and I am working on 2023 to 2024 um zodiac years. Mercury retrograde. And so I'm in some Mercury retrograde energy right now. Um, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but I, I am having that audiovisual delay. So I'm going to try and keep my hands out of the screen as often as I can so that it is not too discombobulating for you guys, which is the word of the day. All right. So first of all, I'm in a super good mood. Secondly, touching your guys's energy is bomb. Third, the Sawillow rune is all about the sun. <laughs> it is about shining forth, shining the light out. It is about the sun breaking through the clouds, coming forth and shining out into the world. Now the Etznab here sign talks about the knife and it actually talks about struggles and trials and tribulations, but it talks about the reflectionary principle of the struggles that we have internally with the struggles that we have externally. Lahun talks about manifestation. So in this way, there is a light that is beginning to be shown on the struggles and the tribu tribulations that you have had on bringing your manifestations in. And every single thing that I am picking up from you guys is this light that's being shown is coming directly from internally. It's this awareness of <clears throat> these are the ways in which you have been defeating yourself. These are the ways in which you have been holding yourself back. These are the ways in which you have been keeping yourself from really stepping into the fullness of what you have the capability of manifesting. Because in all honesty, with your energy, you can literally manifest anything. And I just heard manifest destiny. So you may want to manifest a new destiny. Um, you guys may have, if, if you're new to the, if you're new to the channel, there may be a message for you in my creation superstation, pick a card. Um, because I just got a wave of that same energy over me from that, that reading and that, that energy was just so, so impactful, so phenomenal. I literally like cried when I, <laughs> when I finished doing that reading, but I'm seeing here that there's this element of illusions, ways in which you have allowed your own mind to create illusions. And now there is this sun breaking through and shining forth on that. You're starting to learn that this world is literally created to create. It is created and designed for us to create whatever it is that we want, whatever it is that we desire, whatever it is that makes us feel aligned and happy. Spirit wants that for us. The universe wants that for us. All we have to do is believe 100% 
that that's what we're meant to have and that's what we will have. Now, you guys, you have the higher self here and then this is who you're embodying now. This is the past and how you got into this present state. This is the future and where you're going. And then this is the core of your being. So um, <clears throat> I want to start with your higher self. Your higher self is being embodied by the corn card. Now, you may have been drawn to another pile. If that's the case, please go watch those messages. However, um, if you were drawn to another pile, I get the essence that you're here after that. So, okay. But, <clears throat> sorry guys, with this corn card, your higher self is literally like sending down this awareness into you and who you're embodying now, which is the medicine mother and honor your inner knowing, which means you know that there's this shift happening. This manifestation situation, I want to call it, that you've been having is being cleared up. Um, it's harvest time is what I'm hearing. It's harvest time. The corn has turned brown. So I live in North Dakota and that's in the United States. And we are a predominantly farming state. And quite often we have corn and sunflowers. Now, the thing with these two is that you don't harvest them when they're green. You have to wait until they're brown. That's how you know that they have grown to their fullest and they are ready to be harvested. So if the corn is now brown, then it is fully ready to be harvested. And that means that it is time for you to reap the rewards of what you have planted, what the seeds you've sown, the seeds that you have nurtured, the plants that you have grown, the crops, and bringing that forth because you have this sense of inner knowing that now is the time. Whatever it is that shifted for you, you're in this shift. You're ready to shine your light outward. You're ready to say, okay, I know I'm a reflection. I know this world is a reflection and I'm ready to show people how to overcome this struggle because I have overcome this struggle. So let's see what struggle you guys have overcome. Ah, we have the card one with ancient ones and corn is the card 10, which reduces to a one. So again, this is re- reaffirming that new beginning. Plus we've got the 10 with one and eight and 18 reduces to a nine. So with that, you have the nine, which is that completion, and then into the tens and ones. And then we have Hunter, track down your fears and desires. See, this is exactly what I was talking about. So the Ancient Ones card talks about getting in touch with your ancient soul, with the Ancient Ones that have transcended this life, the, the Ascended Masters, the Archangels, the star seeds that don't return. It's about getting in touch with them and allowing them to help you create the destined life that you want, helping you to create the future and the world that you want to live in, and then trusting that you're moving into that. So in order for that to happen, in order for you to come into this abundant awareness, this inner knowing that your abundance and your prosperity is here, that your manifestations are now here, you had to track down your fears and desires because... When you track down your fears and desires and you're, you're able to recognize which desires are sourced from fear and which fears are pre preventing your true desires from manifesting. And in order to do that, you had to get in touch with something that is otherworldly, something that doesn't exist here. Because something that doesn't exist here doesn't play by the same rules that this world has to play by. And when something doesn't play by the same rules that this world has to play by, then it creates this kind of loophole in the universe for you to slip into so that you can create a loophole within your own mind to overcome these fears so that you can manifest your desires. Um, I don't know why loopholes came in so strongly, but I got like this legal energy to it. So if you guys have been having any kind of legal troubles, this is literally saying that that loophole worked. Um, I don't know. I'm not. Please don't take this as legal advice at all. I am not a lawyer. Please seek proper legal advice. But that was just something that I saw was a lawyer and a document. And, and literally it just like loopholes went over top of it. Now, I'm also seeing uh, the Triscadell here. So it's a, the triple spiral. So this is this triple spiral energy is the maiden, the mother, and the crone. It's it's the phases of the sun and the moon. It, it's There's so much to it. But it's really understanding all pieces of who you are 
And your fears and your your desires are truly pieces of who you are. Now, you may have some ancient fears as well. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. So you may have some ancient fears that you have had to overcome. Things that you just can't understand in this life. Like say, for instance, you're, say you're like me, you're landlocked. There's no oceans anywhere near me, but you're terrified. You're terrified of a hurricane hitting you. It's completely irrational, completely unreasonable, but you have this constant agonizing fear that you're going to be caught in a typhoon or a hurricane or something like that, but there's no reasonability to it, but it is a serious phobia of yours. This is something that is an ancient fear because you may have lived in another world, in another life in which you were in an oceanic community and you had your life taken from one of these events. And you have to track these fears down because these fears you brought into this life in order to surpass them. And to surpass them, you actually set yourself up into a logical situation where there makes no logical sense for you to have them. So you could actually logic your way out of it. That way, once you logic your way out of it, then you can be like, okay, this wasn't my intuition. This was just fear. And that way you don't actually question your intuition nearly as much. And that's really, truly a blessing because there are times where for me, for instance, in my life, I have had to question, like my soul chose a path that led to a lot of doubt and a lot of questioning of my intuition, of my gifts. That was the path that my soul chose. And so it's taken me a long time to get to where I'm at with my gifts because I couldn't logic my way in or out of anything. It was literally mystical experience. And then you just have to accept that it's real. And that's a really hard thing to do for someone who wants to stay in that logical mindset. But for you, it was like you needed that logic there so that your logic and your intuition were kept separate from your fear so that you could blend those two together significantly easier, which is absolutely beautiful. It kept intact this inner knowing that you have within you so that you actually have that intuition untouched. It's like this essence of innocence within your intuition. So let's see where you're heading. So we have Earth Mother, feel loved and comforted. I love that. Oh my gosh. And seven, the child. Wow. Um, You know, I said maiden, mother, and crone, didn't I? I want to say I said maiden, mother, and crone, and I'm literally getting that energy here. It's it's all the phases of. But we have two mother cards here and a child card. So you, I, I have to say it because I'm picking it up. You may be pregnant um, or maybe coming into a phase in which you're going to become a mother. You may be a mother now. That's a very logical argument, but I'm also seeing this healing of the mother wound, healing of the mother line. Um, Again, we've got the triple goddess. So I'm picking up Hecate's energy. So you may have felt as though you have been at a crossroads. You've had to choose one way or the other. You may have um, links to indigenous peoples as well, links to the Celtics, links to... um, Germanic tribes, I'm hearing. Um, Amazon tribes. Uh, it do, You don't have to, but essentially where you're moving from here is this essence of re- reparenting yourself. You're learning how to mother your own inner child and you're learning how to embody your inner child more and more. I'm also seeing the phases of the moon on this card. And so that may be something that really, truly helps you on both this divine feminine mothering aspect as well as the child. So even if you identify as a gender masculine or or a male, you, you identify with the gender of male. When you attune yourself to the moon phases, you're essentially saying, I recognize the fact that we all have natural cycles and that the moon is reflective of these natural cycles. I know that my mother birthed me into this world and she was attuned to these natural cycles and this moon reflects those natural cycles that she was attuned to. So I am respecting this part of myself, this divine feminine part of myself to get in touch with my own divine feminine cycles. And I'm going to follow the phases of the moon 
find out where it correlates in my birth chart and then i'm going to uh, i'm going to approach my life in a more cyclical manner a more cyclical nature and i'm going to honor my own inner divine feminine in that way um and that that is very I'd like to say that's very, actually, it's not very specific to gender identifying males. Everyone is, is capable of doing this. In fact, this is something that I did in order to get in touch with my divine feminine energy, because I was deeply, deeply ingrained in my divine masculine energy. And because I was deeply ingrained in my divine masculine energy, I was running myself into the ground. <laughs> I wasn't allowing myself to rest. I wasn't allowing myself to really take a break. And so I couldn't manifest because I was stuck in this like constantly hurting myself phase. Um, <clears throat> but sometimes insights come in in the ways that we need them to. We just don't realize at the time that that's how they're coming in. Um, and I just got like shown this bolt of lightning. So I don't know if some of you are called to lightning. Um, thunder, Oya, Storms, the Stormbringer. Um, I just heard Storm Crow, Gandalf, Storm Crow. Uh, maybe you guys are really big fans of the Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter. Um, this is just, I, I just have like this bombardment of stuff coming at me. Just if you are resonant with that, this is your message kind of thing, because it's, it's kind of like, you guys feel like a melting pot to me. Um, you feel like a melting pot of so many different things. And I know that I get that a lot with this Ancient Ones card, but I'm I'm actually seeing, oh, I just got hit with a wave. Oh, <laughs> all right, with this stuff here, the as soon as I touch the Ancient Ones, I am seeing that they are helping you design a world in which you would want to reincarnate into. Um, this is very interesting. I, I'm going to roll with this. So <clears throat> pile four, do you, are you a new soul? <laughs> um, this is not an energy I am used to at all. I'm used to working with old souls because I am one. But when I touch these here, the ancient ones feels familiar, but the child and the earth mother feel very, very unique and very different to me. So what I'm picking up here is quite literally, you had some ancient ancestors who came in to help teach you what it was like to be ancient. They helped age you in this life because you're, you're going to reincarnate likely in another time, not in the future. I'm not, I'm hearing not in the future for some of you. It will be your future. It will be your soul's future, but it will not be the world's future. This is very interesting. Um, and you're having dreams that you believe is a past life, but really it's your future life. So you may be having dreams of um, the Mayans. You may be having dreams of the Egyptians. You may be having dreams of the Lemurians. Um, those are the, the primary ones. Also, um, Druids or Celtic. And that Germanic tribe, that Germanic tribe is coming in very strong. Um, you may be having dreams of these and, and thinking, well, that it must be a past life because technically it is the past in this life. But it is not a life that you have lived yet. It's a life that you are in your dreaming state creating. And you're creating this because in this life, you actually had what I'm feeling is a very tumultuous mother. Inter interaction like you and your mother may have had struggles a lot of struggles with each other a lot of struggles to see eye to eye a lot of struggles with with communication and it's been a very hard line to heal and so what I'm picking up is you were blessed to be able to be brought to a place in which you're being asked to create your future your future, your soul's future. And this is so, this is so interesting. Your soul chose to um, create the next life in this life based off of what you're dealing with now. 
so that you're actually going to gain the wisdom in this life and you're going to have like the conscious awareness of this because you know you won't have it in the next life, but it will be imbued in your soul. You are a very, very conscious being. You're a star seed, but you are not of this world. I do not get like I get you got you guys are not of this world. Like I get that it doesn't you don't feel like you resonate with the earth at all. But I get this kind of curiosity with you guys. Almost like you're like I don't get this place, but I want to know. <laughs> I don't get this place, but I want to see. I don't get this place, but I'm so curious. And I love that energy. It's so exciting. What I'm getting here a lot is, is that you guys are preparing to explore the out of bounds nature of time. And, oh, you guys, you guys are like a very rare star seed. I want to say that they call them wanderers where you don't really associate yourself with one place or another, but kind of all places, but you don't come here often because it's so different, but there's something that piqued your interest. Let's find out the core of your being because I, it's like your, your interest is so piqued here and you just wanna know more and so you're creating more lives. That's just what I'm getting. I'm just getting that you're creating lives. That's what you're manifesting right now. And you felt this, but you like, it doesn't, it, there's no logic to it. That's why your logic and your intuition needed to be separate and especially separate from your fears. Okay. <laughs> We've got the card number two, courage, strength, fierceness, and family. See that family thing. There has been an issue with your family. Whether it's your family line here. Um, oh, you guys may resonate deeply with the star Regulus. I can't look away from this lion. There's something about the lion's, the lion's eyes. Lion eyes. Um, not lying eyes, but lion. L-I-O-N. Lion eyes. Um, you guys are Lyran. Lyran souls. I like you just feel Lyran to me. The 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 big cat. It just gets me. You there's your eyes. Oh, all of a sudden, all the eyes. I. You feel like you have a lot of eyes on you. There's a lot of eyes watching you. There's a lot of, a lot of, yeah. There. It, the, Oh, God, the mother energy. The mother, the sage, and abundance. Oh, okay, yeah, I got to cover that up. Okay. I'm not even going to lie, you guys. I can't. Every, everyone is watching you. Everyone is watching you, and you are just watching what you're, what you're creating what you're nurturing, what you're manifesting. That's all you care about here. Everyone else is watching you. You are the maiden, the mother, and the crone. You are the sage. You have this wisdom. You have this knowing. You have this awareness. But you are not from this place, and you know that. And because you know that, you know that you have to create something here as a founding, as a foundational point. So if you can create a past life, that had like you're creating a future life that exists within the past in this time frame in order to give you a more grounded sense of connection to this earth realm. Holy crap. That is amazing. You are literally cutting through all sorts of time illusions. You're you're cut like these are some ancient gifts. These are, these are not of this world gifts. You know that the second you open yourself up to new energies, <laughs> this is so cool. Um, you guys are literally just worried about nurturing what you want to create in this life. 
because you have not had the love and the nurturing that you desired, nor that you deserved for a very long time. But you have stepped into this state of this is who I am and this is what I deserve. This is what I desire and this is what I will bring into my life. And you just, I'm hearing cut through the bullshit. You cut through the bullshit and this is what you're going to manifest. And nobody is going to be able to stop it or take it away. Because you have this wisdom, this understanding, this awareness. And so because you are a new soul, you had to literally create yourself as an old soul. Holy crap. I don't, you guys, I am so in awe of you right now because I just keep getting, you are a new soul who created an old soul. And I don't mean birthed an old soul. I mean, you created yourself into being an old soul. That is awesome. You guys are a time leaper. Um, I've never seen Doctor Who, but I think that that... I think that that relates because I just saw the phone booth. So if you, if you guys watch Doctor Who, this is your confirmation, but something about Doctor Who, I, I guess I, it makes me think of Stargate SG-1 that I used to watch that. And, and you guys like literally just stepped through a portal, but you were not from this place and this place is not resonant with you. And so you had to create something to make it resonant. Trigger warning, trigger, trigger, trigger warning. Five, four, three, two, one. You may have struggled deeply with um, self-harm ideations, um, suicidal ideations, self-harm tendencies. I just picked up that really strongly and it was because you could not resonate with this place. It was because you could not understand this place. It was too much for you. But you have a soul that is stronger than anything else. And your soul literally was like, okay, I need to do something. Um, If you go to sleep and you wake up and you feel like you're floating, if you wake up and you feel like you haven't slept, if you wake up and you're like, why do I feel like I just ran a marathon and then got hit by a truck, but you're not sick, you just feel tired, energetically tired. It's because your soul has been on hyperdrive creating past lives for you to live out after this life in order to create the foundation that you needed for this life because at some point you almost escaped this life and that was not part of your plan, but you have overcome that now. And I am getting from the Mayan ancestors a huge outpouring of congratulations of you did this. You will never deal with that again. So you do not need to worry yourself at night anymore. That is amazing. Good job. I want you guys to know that this is something that is so deeply, deeply ingrained in me. This is not something I am a stranger to. I have this in my colon for a reason. So I am a survivor as well. I pulled myself out of it as well. And I am proud of you as well. If this is if it resonates with you. And that was the energy I was picking up. But moving forward, know that you will be able to be healing that and just open yourself up to receiving. That's that's pretty much all they want you to know is that you have created the foundation that you needed and that all of your future incarnations are set now to heal this wound so you can let it go in this life. Even if you and your mother... You know, if you have a, a, a rocky relationship and you're like, well, how do I keep going? You don't have to anymore because you've created what you needed to create in order to heal it in the future. And so you can release it so that you can live more fully in this life because that's the time frame that you are ready for. No more trials, no more tribulations, but manifestation, fierceness, and building the family that you desire in this life from here on forward without feeling as though you are um, betraying the family that you were born into. It's, it's time for you to have your own. All right, pile four. This is all I am seeing. This is all I'm hearing. I want to say thank you so much for being here. Thank you to your guides and my guides for facilitating the connection between us. Thank you so much to the Mayans for bringing these messages forth. And thank you so much, Spirit, 
It is always so amazing when I get to touch new energies and channel new energies and bring these messages forth and they excite me and leave me feeling so inspired and I am just ever so grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you, spirit. Pile four, if this resonated, please hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming readings. Down in the description box below, you will find links to my author page on Amazon, as well as links to donate to my channel and book a personal reading if you feel so inclined. Let us know down in the comment section below if this resonated, how it resonated, and what kind of dreams you guys have been having. I'm so curious. This is a very unique gift, so I'm very curious about you guys. All right, Pile 4, I want to say thank you again so much for being here. I love you all. Bye.